Okay, for this first part of the tutorial, let's have a look at what's going on with enemy logic. So this is the game. You can see we've got a player here who's a capsule with some enemies. So we'll start running the game. Have a look around. And we can see the enemies are showing the fact they're sleeping by little Zs appearing above them. When we look at them, they, uh, they show us a few other things as well, like their mood. Then if we go and get close to one, he's going to start chasing us. Quite slowly, I have to say, but we'll get them more aggressive later. And then when he gets close enough, he's going to have a go at hitting us. Ow. Well, it does any harm at all right now. And we can activate all of them and they will eventually go around and chase each other and hit each other if we can get them to line up yeah so those two are going to beat each other up now for a bit okay so that's it very very straightforward not much enemy logic uh, but yeah they sleep they attack uh, they follow us and they get hit by each other so that's pretty much it. Let's have a look at the code for that. So in this first scene, we're using the code from the Quaternions tutorial, which is movement state machine three. And here that is. So let's have a look first of all. So first of all, the start function, it caches lots of variables about the character so that we don't have to keep getting them later on for a bit of performance. And then basically, this routine here is a coroutine. It waits for a random amount of time, minimum of three seconds, and then it puts that sleeping prefab, those Zs above the character's head, and that Z knows how to move itself, and it gets orientated towards the camera. And then in the update function, well, first of all, we got this if busy, and that's because basically when the enemy is attacking you, it stops this update function from running. So this is really fully functioning code, but a bit messy because there's lots of different states going on. Then we check if something's sleeping, and if it is, uh, we check whether the player's anywhere near them, and if they are, they wake up. Otherwise, uh, if our target's dead, we go back to sleeping. Otherwise, we work out the distance from our target and that's uh, the target is here, not always a player, because they can target each other. And then we check uh, the distance. If it's greater than a certain sleep distance, we sleep. Otherwise, uh, we start the attack coroutine if they're within the minimum attack range. And then, other than that, we actually move them uh, towards their target. So. Again, if you've read through the tutorial, you know I don't like this code very much, uh, but it works fine. So there's some kind of nice things in it and some bad things in it, and we'll see how we can improve it. Go into attack, it makes sure you're not sleeping, it makes it busy so that update function doesn't work anymore, so this now has control. Uh, it sets a target, it waits for the animation to be 50% complete. Uh, if the victim is still alive, and it's within the, the effective range of the attack then we send some damage to it you saw that with the enemies killing each other a minute that was working and then we wait for the animation to complete and then we turn it off and set busy equals false which allows this update loop to keep running and it goes through there again and there's a similar thing in here for them uh, dying and being hit so being hit make it busy, stop all animations, wait for it to play the hit animation and then allow the update function to work again. So as I say, fully functioning but really not very attractive because it's kind of hard to work out what's going on at any one time. We've got a bunch of booleans affecting things, they're sleeping and this busy. We've got lots of indented ifs in here. It's kind of hard to work out. I've got a sleeping equals true here so that kind of works because it falls through another code executes, but you could imagine very easily if I inserted some more code in here 
the fact that I've changed sleeping equals true wasn't a very good idea there as well. Where I return. So not that neat. So let's go back to the tutorial. We're going to load up scene two. Scene two is exactly the same as scene one, apart from we using different functionality to control the enemies to make it a bit different. So each enemy now has the rotate the face target two script and the finite state machine one script associated with it. So if we run that, we'll just go and make sure it's all exactly the same. I'm going to activate a couple of these enemies. Sure enough, they're attacking us and each other. Yeah, it looks pretty much the same. Okay, great. So that's using Finite State Machine 1. Now this, we've switched to use a very clearly defined set of finite states. So we define all the states an enemy can be in here. Sleeping, following, attacking, being hit and dying. We've got a variable which controls that state and we've cleaned everything else up. So our start function no longer has any coroutine in it. It's just a start function. Our update clearly has different functions every time we've got a different state. So we're using a switch statement on the current state and then basically we're saying if the enemy states are sleeping, then because we don't have a coroutine, we need some timers. So we just check whether we're within the time of the next is appearing. If we are, we create one, we set it up properly, and then we set the time of the next one. Uh, otherwise, we check whether the player is within uh, the attack distance. And if it is, we start following the player. If we're following the player and the target's dead, we kill it and go back to sleeping. Otherwise, we check whether we're within the uh, maximum distance away. And if we run too far away, we put it back to sleeping. And if we're within the attack distance, we make it the attacking state. And otherwise, we move it. So then when we're attacking, we uh, check whether we've hit the target or not, and whether the time of the uh, animation is greater than 50%. And if it is, we send the take uh, damage message. And if the attack animation is greater than 1, so we finished it, normalized time, uh, we either put the enemy back into the following state or the sleeping state, depending on whether his victim is dead or not. Being hit, we simply wait for the hit animation to complete, and then if our target's dead, following or sleeping, and then dying, we wait for the animation to complete and then destroy the game object. And the other place where we have some states, some switches, is in on trigger enter, where we just do this code if the enemy was sleeping or following the player. We uh, use it to target the player. If uh, they enter the zone and if it's a rival, we check their mood. And if they're pretty unhappy and a random number happens, then uh, we get them to attack the rival rather than the player. So that's it. Now the state's much clearer and easier to understand because it's all very constructed. But just to point out that if we want to see all the things to do with sleeping, we have to look at sleeping here, and then we have to scroll all the way down past following, past attacking, past being hit and dying, right down here to find the rest of the code to do with the sleeping state. So in part two of the tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can improve that and make it look a bit neater. So we'll just have a quick sneak peek of that. If we open up scene three and look at oops, look at finite state machine two, here we can see that we're defining all of the sleeping code in one close block, a lot less indenting, no switch statements getting in the way, a lot cleaner and easier to use. So we'll be looking at that in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.